two basic types of computer memory internal to your computer. Hard disk memory is relatively slow memory compared to RAM memory. RAM memory consists of electronic chips that slide into slots on the motherboard, the large circuit board in the computer. If there are empty slots in your computer, you should be able to add more RAM memory fairly easily. With no empty slots, new RAM memory of higher capacity might be installed in the slots. 32-bit operating systems can only access 3.25 gigabytes of RAM. More than 4 gigabytes of memory does not help with a 32-bit operating system. 64-bit operating systems can access more memory but require 64-bit software. The hard drive in a computer is the slowest type of memory storage in your computer, although CD-ROM and floppy drives are slower. Hard drive transfer rates and storage capacity have increased with newer technology. Newer hard drives spin faster, some at 10,000 RPM, have the data packed more dense on the drive, and a new cable interface is faster than the previous standard. Serial ATA, SATA, is a new standard in hard drive cables which are smaller in physical size than the EIDE ribbon cables that were previously the standard. Using a smaller SATA cable makes for better airflow within the computer case. Hard disk drives operate faster if there is sufficient unused space on the drive and if the entire contents of files are located in the same physical area of the disk. Included with all versions of Windows are two programs that you may run to help with this, Disk Cleanup and Disk Defragmenter. It would be best to run Disk Cleanup first to free up space and then run Disk Defragmenter. Depending on the speed of your computer and other factors, the Disk Defragmenter could take a long time to complete. When the amount of free RAM memory starts getting low, contents of RAM memory is transferred to much slower hard disk storage in an area known as the swap or page file. The following example in Task Manager shows that the page file usage is increasing. The brain of a computer is a CPU which is an acronym for Central Processing Unit. Information from the various input devices is commanded by the operating system. Instructions coded in software programs are executed by the CPU as well. CPU speed is rated by cycles which are a grouping of instructions done in one cycle. This rating is rather confusing and seems to differ between AMD and Intel chips. One cycle per second is known as a hertz, one million cycles in a second is a megahertz, and one billion cycles is a gigahertz. Newer computers have ratings over two gigahertz. In comparison, the old Radio Shack I started with was rated at 0.89 megahertz. To make things even more confusing, newer CPUs are available as dual core or even quad core processors which split up the processing tasks but are not really like having two or four processors in your computer. Some applications can realize more of a gain in speed with multiple core processor than other applications. The applications that you need to run on your computer should influence your decision to purchase a computer with a high performance graphics card or to replace your present graphics card. On my previous computer I purchased a higher performance graphics card for video editing because the upgraded software kept crashing. It did help. Applications that might require a higher performance graphics card than normally comes with the computer would be video editing, graphics design, or serious gaming. Specifications that you would look at when choosing a graphics card would be the amount of memory, the frame rate, and compatibility with Microsoft DirectX. If you think you need a higher performance graphics card, I would suggest doing some online research as things change fast in the computer industry. The internet can be both a blessing and a curse. The blessing is all the wonderful information and capabilities it gives you on your computer. 
It can also be occurs in that without proper protection, you are vulnerable to viruses, spyware, and unknown people taking over your computer. When it comes to internet speed, even with a fast computer and connection, there are factors beyond your control that might slow down your internet browsing speed. Some websites can become so busy at times they cannot keep up with the internet traffic. Or the problem could be at your internet provider. So after being patient for a time, it might be worth giving them a call to see if there's a known problem in your area. Web pages are downloaded to RAM memory, then saved to temporary disk files. Obviously, if your computer is low on free disk space, browsing performance will suffer. Temporary Internet Explorer files can be deleted. Also, trying to run other computer resource intense programs while web browsing will slow down your web browsing. Try closing the other programs. What is spyware? Spyware programs are loaded on your computer most often without your consent and then gather information from your computer that is sent to advertisers. Besides increasing the amount of spam you will receive, the spyware programs can slow your computer down to a crawl and cause it to crash. When a computer that is on the internet starts running slow, running a program that finds and removes spyware is one of the first things you should try. SpyBot is an excellent free program. Computer viruses differ from spyware in that they have the ability to replicate themselves. Viruses often attach to other programs or are a macro that might run in a program such as Microsoft Word. In some cases, a virus might cause great harm to a computer. In fact, it might be unusable and files are wiped out in the process. Antivirus programs will normally run some type of real-time scanning that runs all the time it gives you the option to run a thorough scan. This is often scheduled to run when you are not using the computer. Antivirus programs are scanning more files all the time, which takes longer. Phishing is using a fraudulent process to acquire sensitive information by masquerading as a trustworthy entity. Often, this is done by fooling you to believe the message is from a popular website, such as a bank, or social networking websites such as YouTube or Facebook. Microsoft included a tool in Windows Internet Explorer 7 and Windows Live Toolbar to try to identify phishing websites. It may run in an automatic or manual mode. Basically, what this does is analysis of websites as you browse to determine if there are characteristics that might indicate the website is suspicious for phishing activity. The first time you bring up Internet Explorer 7, you are prompted if you want the phishing filter to check websites automatically. If you select the automatic option, you will also be asked for permission to send information about suspicious websites to Microsoft. Although a worthwhile feature, this does take additional resources from your computer. Microsoft had a problem with some web pages taking an unusually long time to evaluate and issued a fix included with a security update. Today's fully loaded applications are more complicated, require more memory, and are more likely to crash than their predecessors. As an example, the first version of Microsoft Word released in 1984 used only 27,000 lines of code. Later versions use 100 times as many lines of code and 3 times as many commands. Thank <music> you.